Okay, so in the last class we have seen how we can create a LR0 parse table using the uh, concept of a deterministic finite automata. So first we have created a DFA where every state represents what we call as a set of LR0 item. Okay, now just to rephrase, a LR0 item is nothing but a but a production of the grammar with a demarcator represented as a dot in between and it can sit anywhere in the RHS of the production. Okay. From so after creating this DFA, we created we have created a two-dimensional table called as a LR0 parse table and fill up every entry, each of the entry with some of the symbols like SN, which means we should go for shift and go to state n rk that means we should go for a reduction by rule number k a means accept and gn means we should go to state n okay now and there are certain rules which we follow to decide at a given point of time whether we should go for a shift action or whether we should go for a reduce action okay now today we will uh, so after creating this LR0 parse table the job is nothing but to parse the given input string using bottom up parsing by looking at that LR0 parse table. So at a given point of time I should look at the current token and I should decide which action I should take. Okay. Now today we will learn what we call as a limitation of a LR0 parser. Okay. limitation of LR0 parser. To begin with, just to tell you, so at a given point of time we are going for a reduction if the given state has a production like this that is x is equal to s dollar s dot. Okay. Now, now the LR0 parser now it can only go for a reduce action if it has a single item of, of this form. If it has multiple items of this form that means x is equal to s dot and x is equal to suppose y dot then what I should do? I don't know. Okay. LR0 parser cannot decide. Okay. Means which with which entry I should fill up that table. Okay with which production that means whether I should suppose this is rule number one and this is rule number two of the grammar then whether I should go for reduce by one or whether I should go for reduce by two okay so so this is called as a conflict in LR0 parser and we just to formally write it down let me let me tell you <coughs> so an LR0 parser can only go for a reduce action if the given state has a single item okay meant for reduction if it has multiple items which tells me to go for a reduction then the parser get confused and that is called as a else if it has multiple items that tells me whether to go for reduction with two different rules then the parser get confused okay and such thing is called as called as conflicts okay in the LR0 parser okay and this particular type of conflict that means whether I should go with rule number one for reduction or whether I should go for rule number two for reduction is called as a reduce reduce conflict okay 
reduce reduce conflict okay so this is one kind of conflict in a lr0 parser okay second kind of uh, conflict is called as a shift reduce conflict okay what is this shift reduce conflict shift reduce conflict suppose i have a grammar okay. so, suppose in a given state of the dfa i have two rules okay or two items one item tells me that this is l is l comma s dot this tells me what any input token i find i should go for a suppose this is my this is from rule number a so of the grammar then i should go for reduce by rule a <coughs> okay also the given state has a another item like s is equal to s dot comma l this tells me what this tells me that on encountering a comma i should go for a shift action and the final to a state where the state contains the item s is equal to s comma dot l okay this is a shift action now whether to go for a reduce action or whether to go for a shift action the parser again get confused okay so this kind of conflict is called as shift reduce conflict okay so a lr0 parser the main limitation is it is more prone to conflicts due to the complexity of the grammar it can uh, it it can encounter a shift reduce conflict or it can encounter a reduce reduce conflict so today we will solve a small example which will first it will brush up our concepts of uh, how to use a given uh, how to populate a given lr0 parse table and secondly it will will give you a flavor of how we can encounter a conflict okay so my <coughs> example let us start so this is example 1 so let <coughs> the productions of the grammar be s is equal to e plus s again s is equal to e and e can be a number suppose okay now to start with what we do we first add another production s dash is equal to s dollar where dollar represents the end of input string okay now how we will start so we'll start by the suppose this is rule number 0 this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so we'll start by first the initial item of the first rule and that will put it in state starting state so my first item will be s dash is dot s dollar from that item we'll calculate the closure of that item and we'll put all other items which are present in closure of that item into the state starting state so what are what will be in the set closure of i <coughs> so it will be s as dot e plus s s as dot e and e as dot num understood how so you just brush up how we have calculated closure of i what is the rule and then uh, it is pretty easy okay from here there are two scenarios suppose i process this non terminal s <coughs> then what will happen so i represent this state by state 1 okay so i have non terminal s then s dash is equal to s dot dollar okay on processing the non terminal s okay and from here if i say dollar process dollar then it will be s dash is equal to s dollar dot okay this is pretty easy then suppose i process the input string e what will happen so on processing a input string e 
I can have what s is equal to e dot plus s and s is equal to e dot I can have two things okay now let us represent this state as 2 okay and then with with a num what can happen with a num I can have only e as num dot okay now suppose from here suppose I process a plus what can happen so the item will be first s is equal to e plus dot s now I need to find the closer of this thing now the closer of this thing will now include all other productions with starting with the LHS as s so it will be s as dot e plus s s as dot e and again e the production with e in the LHS so e with dot now understood so this is my closer of this item s is equal to e plus dot s okay so let me represent it as state 3 now from here if I encounter a e what will happen if I encounter a e then my demarcator will go to s will be e plus e dot plus s so this item will encounter and s is equal to e dot so this is the state 2 so I go back to state 2 if I process the non terminal e ok now if I process the terminal num what will happen I should go to here ok so suppose this is my state 4 understood now on processing from here with s I should reach to a state s is equal to e plus s dot ok so let me complete the state so this is my state 5 this is my state 6 and this is my state 7 ok so this is a DFA which I have created ok from, for the given grammar now let us try to populate the power step ok so as I have already discussed the power step is nothing but a two dimensional thing where the columns represent the grammar symbols it can be terminals or it can be non terminals so in this case so my what are my terminals it is first is num ok then it is a plus symbol ok and I have also introduced the concept of dollar which represents the end of input string and my non terminals are e and s ok so suppose I am in state 1 <coughs> ok on encountering a terminal e what I should do I should go to state 2 understood and on encountering it non terminal s I should go to state 6 what about a num for a num I should shift by state 4 ok so this is the rule which we have followed for this notations ok whether to, when to shift and when to reduce and when to go to perform the transition now in state 2 suppose I am in state 2 and I have a plus ok now this is uh, this is where the problem lies so here with plus what I can do with plus I can do a shift to state 3 ok or I can go for a reduction by the rule reduce by the rule as to e dot understood so this grammar if I am following this grammar then I am hitting a conflict what is called as a sit reduce conflict ok so in the next class we will see what are the techniques to minimize this conflict so we, ok and this shift reduce conflict can happen if first if a grammar is ambiguous and even if a grammar is not ambiguous we may hit this conflict ok so in the next class we will discuss how to reduce 
or how to minimize conflicts in a large parcel. Okay.